give me the broad brush overview on what you think the media did wrong in covering this story. Uh, uh, first of all, thanks for having me. I'm happy, happy to do that. Okay, so uh, Christopher Steele started putting together um, these memos that, that formed a dossier. There are about 17 memos. He started putting them together in like June of 2016. This was financed by the Democratic National Committee and by the Clinton campaign through an intermediary, which was Fusion GPS and Glenn Simpson. This was a longtime Democratic, uh, not, not Democratic, longtime journalist who became a researcher, uh, founded his own firm. And so they proceeded and they put these dossier together. And over the course of just several months, they came up with these remarkable, remarkable revelations about Trump and Russia. And um, they were not re they were shrouded from public view until after the election. Uh, BuzzFeed published all of these allegations in January 2017. Um, but just before the election, David Korn of Mother Jones reported about the existence of this document. And he abridged it a little bit and said it, you know, it, it contained these allegations about Trump and Russia and that it was put together by this very credible former British intelligence officer, Christopher Steele, who was indeed the person who compiled the dossier. So it didn't, I don't think, have a huge impact on the election so much. But once BuzzFeed published it, it was out there in the open and then it was fair game. And that's where I sort of come in. Um, and discuss how CNN, um, MSNBC, um, the McClatchy newspaper chain, um, and a lot of different pundits um, really, really added a lot of credibility to this thing. They constantly hyped it, and any little thing they could cat uh, they could glom onto, they did, and uh, they made it sound far more credible uh, than it was. And um, and then in the Mueller report sort of was a blow to its credibility, but not a mortal blow. And then the Justice Department inspector general in December of 2019 just blew the thing out of the water, said the FBI had found that this document was either based on publicly available reports, was inaccurate, or was unconfirmed. And so it's three baskets, all of which pretty much uh, uh, amount to a lot of garbage. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, that's what happened. And, uh, you know, I have named the organizations that were really front and center in pushing this thing. I think the two worst offenders in terms of, you know, uh, volume is uh, MSNBC and CNN. But the McClatchy newspaper chain buttressed one key allegation in the dossier, and that was Michael Cohen having allegedly visited Prague to meet with Kremlin representatives for some collusive purpose. That hasn't that hasn't ever that hasn't ever panned out. Mm -hmm. You know, I think at this point we can say it's bullshit, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, can I say that here? I'm sorry. Yeah, no, you can. Um, and just to jump okay. in on that, the story was that Paul Manafort, who had been running the Trump campaign, he was the original connection with the Russians and helping right. sort of pass information. And then when he got in trouble, it was given to Cohen. So Cohen took the secret trip to Prague. And even Cohen was like, no, I didn't. No, no, I didn't. No. And the media no. that wound up falling in love with him won't accept that. Right, exactly, because now Michael Cohen later, you know, flipped on Trump, and so he still says that he didn't visit Prague, right. and everybody's everybody's saying, well, if Michael Cohen flipped on the president and he has nothing more to hide, why would he hide his trip to Prague, right? Right. Why would that be the one lane he didn't feel comfortable impeaching Trump on? Right, because you know, I, you know, I just don't know. I mean, it's yeah. all uh, it's all a lot of silliness, and I think, it, uh, Megan, if you think about it. If you put together the greatest investigative reporters who have ever existed, you know, Bob Woodward, 10 or 15 or 20, you sent them to Russia in June of 2016. It would take them years to come up with one quarter of what Steele alleged over the course of like several weeks. Mm -hmm. So it was it was absurd on its face. You know, there were all these extravagant allegations, namely like they, they said that the, the, the Russians had uh, like intercepts. Um, uh, of Hillary Clinton when she was over there. It's like, you know, they, they, they didn't even say about, talk about the emails. They had some other exotic form, form of intercepted communications that they claimed to have had. Um, so anyway, and of course, so then there's think, the Pete tape. What do you think this was? A function of, you know, especially back in 16, but I mean, uh, equally in 20, the media hated Trump, definitely wanted Trump to lose. 
wanted to believe when you get into the place as a reporter of wanting to believe it's true gosh you have to be so careful about checking yourself over and over again which is even harder when all the press around you is jumping on the story advancing it getting leaks from the fbi the doj people who you would normally find credible and it's it's very hard to go back to the newsroom and say now wait what do we actually know what are the reasons to doubt what does the confirmation look like and it just seems like that just it just wasn't done it wasn't done, but I would say as a caveat that there were several, many newspapers that didn't jump in with both feet. Um, New York Times is uh, one of them. A couple of the other networks, the, the ones that I named are really the main culprits. And, and when you talk about, you know, wanting to believe in my own, and I know that that, that, that involves some something of an unloyally um, speculation. And I think that's fair. You know, when you watch media coverage, you can sort of, uh, at some point divine some degree of motivation. I, the way I see it is that really showed up to me the strongest on Rachel Maddow's show. Um, because on her show, she really seemed like she was wanting this thing to be true. And she kept going back at it and say, ooh, looks, you know, every time there was some little bit of positive, you know, uh, correlation with reported facts and the dossier, she's like, this is lining up. She did a special report about it, I think it was late in 2017, and she's talked about Christopher Steele's deep cover sources inside Russia. Oh, deep boy. cover. Um, and as we found out later, basically Christopher Steele and this other guy, they basically had nothing. Like mm -hmm. these were this was a research guy who had worked at the Brookings Institution. <laughs> this was no deep cover operation. You exactly know, it wasn't right. even close. But you know, it struck me that she was really really hoping that this was going to come true. She seemed and, to, to, to fancy herself a modern day Woodward. You know, she was going to be the one to get the leaks, to bring him down and show. And this is what our team pulled something, um, just a little sample of Rachel Maddow on this story. This is soundbite number 10. Take a listen. Russia. Russia, Vladimir Putin. Russia, 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 Russia hates Russia, 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 Putin, Russia's Russia, 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 Russian, 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 Russia, Russia, Moscow, Moscow, Russia, Russian, pro Russian, Russian, Russia, Russian, 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 the Russians, Russian, 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 Russia, Russian, 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 Moscow, Russian, Russian, Russia, Putin, Russian, 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 Russian against us, Russians, the Russians, Russia against the US, the Russians, Russia, 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 Russian, Russian, Russian government scheme, the Russians, Vladimir Putin, Russia, Vladimir Putin, Russia, Putin, Putin and Russia, Russia, Moscow, Russia, Russian, Russia, Russia, the Russians. That's amazing. That's amazing. Uh, and you know what, Eric? That was all from one show. That was from one show in March of 2017. But it does give you the flavor of what her show sounded like night after night. It, 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 was, it was, you know, I watched or listened to uh, just about all of Rachel Maddow's stuff during that period. Um, and uh, I do think that there is something of a bifurcation when she was covering, you know, sort of like um, trials and court proceedings in the United States. She was pretty careful to stick to what was in the papers with the dossier. I felt she went completely off the rails. And you're right. I think that the, the that compilation does show the the selectivity, you know, the, the story selection, which I think is a really important thing for news organizations to consider how many segments are they giving over? How much total airtime are they giving over to something? Because I think that cements readers and viewers sort of view of the world as much as anything else does. Like, mm -hmm. even if you have um, more or less factual coverage of Russia and it's the only thing you cover, that's a problem, mm -hmm. you know?